In this video, we will relax the assumption upon which we have been relying so far, namely the assumption that all the variables are measured and available for the feedback. Relaxation pretty much motivated by practical scenarios. This relaxation will be directly projected into our model. Besides the standard state equation, we start using also the output equation. This is to say that instead of the state variables, only some subset or possibly even some linear combination is measured. Know that very often in the introductory texts, uh, the D term, the direct feed through, is assumed zero since some formulas are then a bit simpler, but here we do not particularly rely on it. The task is now to find a feedback controller, K, that takes the outputs Y and projects them directly into the controls U. It can be required to keep the controller just proportional, just an array of static gains, perhaps for the reasons of simplicity of implementation and commissioning. The controller should, as usual, stabilize the system and minimize the standard LQ cost. However practical this problem statement is, the trouble with it is that computationally it's surpri surprisingly difficult. It's surprisingly difficult to design such controller. As a matter of fact, the difficulty does not come from the particular form of the cost function, but from the existence of requirements on the structure of the feedback controller. Indeed, once you fix the structure of the controller, be it a PID controller or as in our case, just a matrix version of a proportional controller, the computational task of finding stabilizing gains becomes non-convex. Hence, computationally very challenging. Recall that previously, I mean in previous lectures, we did not require that the LQ optimal controller be a state feedback controller. Instead, the form or the structure of the controller followed from the optimization. In contrast, here we are making an explicit constraint on the form of the controller. Well, in our course I did not plan to go for this essentially research-grade material, but should your project favors this problem form formulation, I can at least inform you that various approaches exist. You may perhaps uh, check uh, Louis' book on optimal control, where a full chapter is dedicated to the problem, or search for constant output feedback keywords in IEEE Explore, Explore library. But my plan for now is to offer you another framework, certainly a more mature one. The framework is well known under the label of LQG Optimal Control. It's based on a combination of an LQ Optimal State Feedback Regulator and an Optimal Estimator, actually Kalman Filter. We have had enough of the former in this course. Let's have a brief look into the letter. It will also give us the clue as for the letter G in the LQG abbreviation. We consider the standard LTI state space model given by the quadruple of matrices A, B, C and D. Here we assume D0 for simplicity. The observer or estimator is essentially Mod, uh, model of the system, but this would not be enough because the model is always just a model. Some correction must be introduced to make the observer, observer practically usable. Putting related terms together, the structure of the observer, by the way attributed to Lohenberger, is more transparent. Its own dynamics is given by the closed loop uh, matrix A minus L times C. And there are two inputs to the observer, the input U to the system and the output U. The observer is parameterized through the matrix L of static gains. Now, what is Kalman filter then? We assume that the standard state space model is augmented with two inputs, W, which is a disturbance acting on the system and entering the state equation, and V, which is a measurement noise that adds to the measurement to the measured output. Note that some people call the disturbance uh, system noise. I personally dislike it. I like uh, using two different names, disturbance and noise. Disturbance is what truly affects the system. Noise or measurement noise is what corrupts the measurements. Anyway, 
both are regarded as random variables, white noise with Gaussian normal distribution at a given time with spectral densities SW and SV respectively. Now, the origin of the letter G is clear, I guess. G stands for Gaussian. For this setup, the matrix L parametrizing the Loenberger observer is desired. Postponing the theory to another course, let me just state that computationally the task is dual to the LQ optimal state feedback problem. Suffice to say that this means that Riccati equation needs to be solved. You will certainly be able to call the CARE care solver in MATLAB with appropriate coefficients and then use the result to obtain the L coefficient for the observer, now called Kalman filter. Uh, note uh, that the interpretation of the solution of the algebraic Riccati equation is that it is a covariance matrix of its estimation error. The optimal cost is then, I do not write it here explicitly, the trace of this covariance matrix, that is, the mean square error, the mean square value of the estimation error. Theory aside, good news is that, again, computational routines for this computation are available in perhaps any serious computational package. In MATLAB it is named, not surprisingly, Kalman. Simple example on Kalman filter. Estimate the range and radial velocity of an aircraft from noisy radar measurements of its position only. The model is just a double integrator. The state variables are the range or distance r and its derivative, the radial velocity. Note that the very problem of estimation has nothing to do with control and therefore in the model we do not even need to model how the control signal enters. Instead we do have to specify or model how the disturbance, torque, affects the system. We also need to specify the output equation. It uh, tells us that it's only one of the two state variables that is measured. Uh, this, is, uh, th this I have already mentioned and it's only the range that is measured. And the equation also shows that the measurement noise is directly added to the measurement of the position. It's an additive noise. Initial position and uh, initial velocity are specified. The implementation of both the design procedure and uh, the simulation in Simulink can be downloaded on the course website. You can see that the initial discrepancy between the estimated and true states diminish, diminishes. But the system is exposed to random disturbances and therefore the estimation error never really decays perfectly. It never really goes to zero exactly. But the mathematics behind the design guarantees that it is as small as possible in the mean square sense and under those special conditions, these we should keep in mind, uh, Gaussian white noise as models for both disturbance and measurement noise. Moreover, these two should be independent. Practically speaking, determining the spectral densities SW and SV can be difficult, but without diminishing the value of uh, those attempts to estimate these uh, parameters, I can propose an engineering attitude. The two coefficients or coefficient matrices play the same role in the computation that the Q and R matrices played in the LQR design. Therefore, they can be viewed as sort of kind of tuning knobs. Again, it's not their absolute values, but rather ratios between the two that matters. Setting the coefficients in uh, the SW matrix higher than those in SV means that we expect more intensive disturbance and therefore we should trust the model less than we trust the measurements. If it's the other way around and the coefficients in SV are higher, this reflects the fact that we anticipate heavy measurement noise that makes the measurement less trustworthy and we rely more on the model. If you have not been exposed to the design of Kalman filter yet, try a few iterations uh, by yourself with the provided models and code. Good. Now combine the two, the LQR state feedback and the Kalman filter to form an output LQG controller. The way to combine the two, in fact, uh, uh, the, in fact, the general state feedback and a uh, general observer, not just uh, the optimal ones, is uh, in, the, in the in the block diagram. 
reminder, computationally, uh, the design amounts to solving two algebraic Riccati equations, one for the optimal state feedback, one for Kalman filter. But in MATLAB, you can use uh, just those convenient higher level design routines LQR or DLQR in the discrete time setting for the LQR state feedback and Kalman for Kalman filter design. And then LQG reg to glue it all together. Example. Here we combine uh, the previous two examples on stochastic LQR and the Kalman filter. And you know what? I will finally launch my own MATLAB and play a bit with the design and the simulation. So let's get out of the presentation and let me show you what I've prepared. So here comes the code. Then I have the simulink model for the simulation and of course the scope with the simulations from some previous run. But let's first start with the, the code here. So in the first block you can see that I built the the matrices defining the state space model and to note that I have the, the two B matrices here, one corresponding to the control input U and the other corresponding to the disturbance. Then I built the state space model for convenience, I also label the inputs, the states and the outputs. But what then matters from the computational point of view is uh, these parameters here. These are this is actually the the place in the whole code where I, as an engineer, design something or or make some decisions. So I can set the penalty on the states and the controls. We can see that here the initial setting is that I only penalize the first of the two states. I only penalize the, uh, the distance and not the velocity. I don't care about the velocity. And then I have uh, the two guesses at uh, spectral densities for the two uh, random variables, uh, SW for the disturbance and SV for the measurement noise. Then in this block I'm designing a state feedback. The result is then stored in the K variable and Kalman filter, the matrix or vector of coefficients that parameterizes this observer, Kalman filter, uh, is L. And then, as I've already mentioned, there is this convenience function LQG reg that uh, puts it all together to form just a dynamic output feedback control. Dynamic, I mean higher order, not just a static one. Then, in th this is somewhat technical block in which I'm translating the information that I have about the random variables here, the in particular the spectral density. I translate it here into, or or, or transform it here into some other uh, coefficients expected by uh, by the Simulink uh, random random signal blocks. You will find the details in the in the user's manual. And for uh, out of curiosity or, or uh, in addition to the design, I can also uh, plot or analyze analyze uh, stability margins here. So let's uh, go for it. I will run the design. You see that here is the open loop transfer function with the uh, gain and phase margins already computed. So uh, already uh, uh, this uh, seems qu quite nice, some 60 degrees uh, face margin and uh, 15 decibel gain margin, pretty decent. Let's now run the simulation. Essentially I get what I had there before, but now let's have a look at these outcomes. So the first two signals, the random signals, are uh, the disturbance and the measurement noise. These are uh, white noises. Of course, in uh, this implementation, just approximate white, no white noises. 
and then I have the control signal here and the one of the two state variables theta because that's the only one that according to the assignment I should be interested in so theta you can we can see that it goes uh, it, it's roughly between minus and plus 0 0.05 say we are not quite happy about it we want to uh, make this uh, regulation error smaller so what's what shall we do about it we can penalize the corresponding uh, state variable we can in by increasing the the corresponding element in the Q matrix say uh, we'll increase it 100 times remember this is quadratic uh, all right so let's rerun the design if you are not familiar with uh, or not that much familiar with MATLAB then note that this K LQG is really some um, object uh, and then here within a simulink I'm just entering uh, the the name of this object so this is th this is how I get the results from MATLAB into simulink now let's run the simulation and see what happens obviously I achieved what I wanted the regulation error now seems uh, reduced quite significantly but of course this comes this reduction comes at a cost and the cost is clearly that the control signal is larger right and that's it yeah you may also notice that by requiring more a little bit more aggressive controller the face margin is decreased the, the gain margin as well but still quite acceptable all right i think that's that was enough for the illustration and it's now up to you if you if you want to play with it a little bit more so let's close it this one as well Worse now, the presentation right here. So let's move on. Right, we have seen some uh, basic usage of uh, computational tools for design of LQG optimal output feedback controller or regulator. Actually, the impression so far was uh, great. I hope so. Just four types of tuning knobs Q and R and SW and SV with which we conveniently search for the right trade-off between aggressiveness and economy of control and reliance on model and reliance on uh, the measurements but uh, life's not easy is it let's have a look at stability margins a little bit more carefully we still remember the magic of LQR methodology for which there uh, for which pretty decent stability margins are guaranteed. Are there any similar guarantees of stability margin for LQG? Nope. John Doyle put it clearly. This was perhaps the shortest abstract of a scientific paper that I've ever read. In fact, the whole paper revolves around a counterexample. Here it goes. For the system, for the given system, you can find the values of Q, R, S, W, and S, V parameters such that the stability margin are stability margins are arbitrarily small. Bad luck. In fact, this observation that was made back in the 70s started a quest for some other design techniques. Well, uh, the frustration some sort of frustration was already felt by the engineering community uh, in those days uh, because those LQG techniques uh, they did really a good job in the space domain in which the models were pretty accurate but then they failed miserably when engineers tried to apply them in some more down-to-earth engineering applications because of uh, their lack of accurate uh, models and lack of uh, robustness of the LQG as Joyle formally or as uh, John Doyle formally proved 
In the rest of the course we will essentially explore what are various alternatives, what are the options or more robust uh, methods. And we start right away. We introduce a heuristic modification of the LQG design procedure that aims at improving the robustness. The technique is called loop transfer recovery all or just simply LTR control. The key idea is make the LQG a bit similar to LQR. That is, make the Kalman filter rely a little bit less on the knowledge of you. You will see what I mean right away. Kalman filter receives the input to the system as one of its two inputs, right? But the trouble is that there's typically some unmodeled dynamics around the input to the system, which demonstrates itself as if the input was actually rather different than what the controller sends there. In this sense, Kalman filter is being fooled because it receives an incorrect information. Therefore, a good idea is to cancel or at least weaken the signal path from the control input to the system, actually the computed control signal, the signal produced by the controller, to the Kalman filter input. But uh, how can we do that? The idea is this. Simply introduce some fictitious noise, VF, WF. I mean, introduce it only in the design phase. I do not certainly suggest introducing whatever physical noise to the real system. And this noise should enter the system or the model in the same way the control signal does. This is how the state equation changes then. For the new noise we also have to provide the spectral density as WF. But since the noise is really just a computational construct, it's artificial, the corresponding spectral density is nothing but a tuning knob for us. It has no physical meaning. But increasing its value, we are fooling the LQG design procedure to think that the input to the system is horribly affected by some disturbance and that Kalman filter should incorporate this somehow. And that's it. You will find some quite elaborate theoretical treatments in the literature, but the core idea is essentially this simple and intuitive. Let's have a look at an example, a model of a singling robotic arm. Linearized state equation is this, where W is a disturbing torque with a given spectral density SW. And the output equation shows that it's only the angle of the arm that's measured and that the measurement is corrupted by the noise V of a given spectral density SV. The cost to be minimized is the standard combined mean square value of the angular regulation error and the control. Uh, let me now comment a little bit on the design and the results in uh, MATLAB again. So let's do it this way. So here comes the design code. Let me first go through it swiftly and only then I will run it. So again, it was we had before state state space matrices again splitting the b matrix into two parts one corresponding to the controller the other corresponding to the disturbance then building the state space model setting the spectral densities for the disturbance and the noise setting the uh, weighting matrices for the lq uh, lq lqr stuff uh, designing the LQR, designing Kalman, combining them, uh, computing the open loop transfer function and plotting it and computing the margins. So that's, uh, that's again, I forgot to emphasize it, uh, this initial part of the code is just the standard LQR, just as a reference here. 
and here comes actually the the LTR design. So the only thing that we do is that we extend our original B matrix formed by these two matrices. We extend it with a new B matrix, but this one is identical to the B corresponding to the control, right? So this is our new B matrix. And so with this new B matrix, we build a new auxiliary or extended auxiliary system. Then we set the spectral density for our artificial noise and we set it uh, somehow unrealistically or, I mean, uh, arbitrarily high. Just really to fool the system uh, to think that, I mean, the control system to think that the system is heavily loaded by the disturbance at the input. Then we form uh, spectral density matrix for the augmented system and design a new Kalman filter. You see, we leave the optimal state feedback intact. We are only uh, changing or designing new Kalman filter. Then we combine this new Kalman filter with uh, with the with the original state feedback, and that's it. And for this uh, new uh, LQG uh, optimal output feedback controller, we compute the open loop transfer function. And for this, we also plot the open loop uh, frequency responses and compute the margins. So, high time to run the code. So, these are the two frequency responses. So, let's have a look at how it how it works. So, the first uh, the first frequency responses, the ones on the left are corresponding to the LQG design and we can see that uh, the phase margin is some 10 degrees again margin is slightly more than uh, than 1 decibel actually minus 1 decibel so how how is it with uh, the with the LTR design somewhat better right 3 or actually even 4 times better uh, gain margin and uh, similarly three times larger face margin so obviously somehow it it works and it's it's really quite a usable procedure so if you start uh, using LQG stuff it's a not a it's not a lost game you can still keep using it and using these tricks like LTR you can uh, improve the robustness, the insensitivity to, to modeling discrepancies somewhat. All right, that was it. And let's uh, move on again. So we are approaching the grand finale. What I would like to show you finally is that, similarly as we formulated the LQR design problem as an instance of the H2 system norm minimization, we can also pose the LQG problem within the same H2 norm minimization framework. For the LQG problem, I claim that the equivalent block diagram for the H2 norm minimization is uh, this. The gray block, the artificial plant, or actually more often called generalized plant in the community, now uh, contains some new stuff with respect to the LQR situation. Let's go through all these systematically. First, we observe that we have again two groups of inputs. In the first group, also called exogenous inputs, we have the random disturbance W and the measurement noise V. What makes them valid members of this group is that uh, none of these is under our control and they are only known to the extent that we know that they belong to some class of signals. Namely, in this case, they are white noises. If you now check the diagram carefully, you can see that these noises are actually assumed to be of unit spectral density, because the generalized plant also already contains the blocks with SW and SV that scale the spectral density accordingly. Think about the reason for the square root there. The second group of input contain, contains a single signal here, the control signal U. In fact, that's how 
the membership into this group is defined. These are simply the inputs to the system that are under our control. We can change these signals in real time arbitrarily in order to influence the system, the, the response of the system. Obviously, membership in these two groups is exclusive. Either the signal belongs to one group or the other. Good. Then we have two groups of outputs. The first group contains the signals Z1 and Z2 in our diagram. Generally, we call these signals regulated outputs. This is to say that we want to make and keep these signals small. Small in some sense, but this sense ne needs to be specified precisely, of course. But we already did it, uh, right? These signals should be kept small in terms of the mean square value. Finally, the second group of outputs, Y signal in our case. Membership into this group this group is defined simply by the fact that the given signal or variable is measured and fed to the controller for further processing. We call these simply measured outputs. Unlike in the case of the two input groups, here the membership is not exclusive. Obviously, we may want to keep some signal small, and yet we measure it and use it for feedback control. In our case, this did not happen, but generally it could be the case. This brings me to generalization of the proposed control design scheme. The task for the designer is to formulate, to build the generalized plant, say P, with two groups of inputs and two groups of outputs with the roles, the roles that we have just defined. What's inside the P block is up to the designer. It could be exactly what we had in the case of LQR and LQG designs, but it could also be it could also contain some modifications and augmentations on top of these. For example, some first or second order filters could be added to the exogenous input signal paths to account for the fact that the inputs are not exactly white noises, but rather, more realistically, something called colored noises with a frequency limited spectrum. The crucial thing the crucial property of this generalized plant is, however, that if the regu regulated outputs are pushed towards zero, in some sense that we have just discussed, the control specifications are satisfied. You see what I mean? Uh, you really need to formulate this P system such that if some possibly even artificial signals are pushed to zero, uh, you get from your physical uh, control system exactly what you want it. Once the generalized plan is specified, the role of the designer has been essentially fulfilled because uh, what remains is a purely computational task of minimizing the norm with some stabilizing controller. The N function inside the norm stands for this special feedback interconnection of the generalized plant and the controller special in that only a subset of inputs and a subset of outputs are used for feedback control. We will later discuss this a little bit more and we will name it, this whole feedback interconnection, interconnection uh, as a so-called linear fractional transformation. Well, now this well-defined problem has been rigorously studied and numerous numerical solvers exist. Our plan in this course is not to go into the mathematical details. Instead, we find ourselves more in the position of users of such computational tools. And this is essentially the end of our LQ story. We've not only learned to formulate <coughs> control design problems in the optimization framework, in which the cost function is an integral of some, uh, of some function of states and controls. But through this interpretation of the LQ optimal control as, or through the interpretation of the LQ optimal control as uh, minimization of system norm, we finally arrived at an interesting question. And the question is, how about uh, minimizing some other system norm? The same setup with the artificial generalized plant 
and a feedback controller using just a subset of its input and outputs, but just a different system norm. Can we gain something here? The affirmative answer to this question, the answer yes, will give us a program for the rest of the course.